What's going on YouTube? Back again for another movie review tonight. And tonight we're going to be reviewing a movie that I want to say when I was younger, it sure as hell gave me the creeps. And I think a lot of you can attest to that as well. And that, that movie is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And this was this was something. I got to say, this, this was definitely something. And uh, with it being labeled as a uh, Guillermo del Toro um, as a visionary producer, a name that I um, that I really respect, and 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 when his name is attached to something, I definitely am very much interested. Not only just that, but again with the nostalgia of the books uh, when I was a child, I knew this was something that I wanted to see, and um, I, I wanted to see how it was carried out. So the review for this movie. It's coming up right now. All right, so this movie takes place in 1969 in uh, in Pennsylvania, in um, Mill Valley, Pennsylvania, where we see a group of high school kids. Um, we technically start off following three, what eventually becomes four. And it's Halloween. They're all dressing up. They're doing they're doing high school stuff, pranks, and you know costumes, hanging out with their friends and so forth. They get into a little. They they get into t uh, the high school things, you know, getting chased, chasing girls, being chased by bullies, uh, and, and and so forth. So the movie really progresses from just Halloween tact, this Halloween stuff, to driving movie theaters to actually doing you know what most teenagers do let's let's find something else we can explore which where they eventually end up in a haunted house and in this haunted house there's a story there's there's an urban legend with this haunted house that is uh very important to the small town and this haunted house is synonymous with um a little girl named sarah bellows and sarah bellows was um she was really labeled by her family as troubled and um, labeled with having um, a personality disorder and that her family completely much exiled her. They exiled her from the family existence. I mean, pictures, everything. They completely exiled her. And they locked her up in a basement. And, you know, this was traumatizing to a little girl where her family disowned her. She was tortured. She was, um, you know, called crazy and so forth. And while the time that this little girl spent in the basement... Um, she would tell stories to the other kids and these stories ended up becoming myths and legends and and uh, and and it actually it, it, it gave a really negative tone to not only just her but the family and everything that's synonymous with the family and um, so the kids they decide like hey we're gonna go check out this haunted house and we're gonna see how true is this story really is so they did some investigating as kids usually do and they um they they uncover some really interesting things so we follow stella ramon um Ag aggie and chuck as they pretty much do some they, they they do some scaling of the house and they're they're pranking each other and stuff still until they actually uncover a secret room, which the secret room ends up being Sarah's room, Sarah Bellow's room. And within Sarah Bellow's room, we end up finding a secret book. The book where all of the stories that she used to tell all the kids back in the day are written. And so they, you know, as kids, they spook each other enough and they see things. And um, eventually they leave um, taking the book back home, which we all know in scary movies is a big no-no. Um, it's always some ramifications with that. And so this movie does exactly that. Um, so the way how this book works is this book, every night, now that they've taken it out of the house, would write. Now, you, 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 you see it writing at the same time, but it would write and tell a story. And the story would affect, it would come to life and affect the person that the story is, um, is being told about. So we see weird things happen with her friends and foes and so forth. 
and people are going missing in the town because of what's happening in the book um and it's uh it's it's really crazy and it's, it really takes it really takes the story and it takes these kids on an adventure to not only um find the true story behind cerebellos but also to protect their friends because at this point now each and every night someone is being targeted by the stories and it could ultimately into end up being uh the the the, the compromise of that person's fate so um about the story you know I, I, let's talk a little bit about the movie itself like i thought for for a horror movie I thought this, I, I thought the movie was okay. Um, it was really slow paced, um, and, and because the the story having source material wants to make sure they was able to introduce the characters, which they did slowly, um, kind of keep the psychology of high school kids, which I thought they did pretty good as far as the mistakes and their interactions within each other. Um, even their dialogue, which is like kind of wonky, but you think back like they're high school kids, so it kind of works. Um, I thought the sound mixing was really good, which I think is important when it comes down to horror films, that does the sound carry and make an impact uh, when when the story being told, as well as the score complement and everything, really, really good. Um, I thought the costume design was really good, especially with some of the monsters that you see introduced in this film, I thought was really, really good. Um, and of course, as everybody wanna know, is the, sc is the story scary? I would we'll say I was alarmed a few times um, to kind of keep my G card right now, but uh, nonetheless, I thought I thought it did have a lot of good elements of surprise. Um, I thought the character design, not not costume, but character design, as being correct towards the book was really good. I thought that the characters really did look and resonate to what the book did back in the day. However, I don't, I didn't technically feel the connection to the characters um as when i was younger as i did with seeing them on the screen uh but as far as the acting was with with everybody i thought it was pretty good dean norris is his movie and dean norris is just um he he's stellar's dad and dean norris is one of my favorite guys especially his work on there there was a kingpin which we didn't get a lot of so if you're looking at the cast then you didn't get a lot of him because that's the important things because the relationship between him and his daughter you can see being really brought to life towards the end of this movie as we know this book uh, we know by the books that this movie will have a sequel so um yeah not a lot of him which i was a little bit disappointed in because again but um um yeah you do see a lot of what's as as you can tell the stories focusing what's going to be next as a sequel is definitely going to be uh coming about but again, um, the focus of this movie and the story is that you see a group of high school kids as they try to bring truth to uh, Cerebellos, a troubled kid as as it's being labeled, um, who was exiled by their family, who now haunts and haunts by the stories that she writes in her books. That is her wrath and, and revenge to uh, to this small town because of no one believing her and everyone thinking that she's crazy and being exiled and the family abuse and 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 so forth so it's her it's her way of retaliation why these kids are seeking to find the truth of this story to to bring more light to it and with the main character stella being a writer or her her supreme passion is writing um she draws to this even more because of the fact of it's storytelling and she wants to make sure that not only can she find the original source material of this uh, of this uh, urban myth or, or legend that she can also tell the story correctly and uh, and kind of bring peace to this whole situation. But again, um, I thought this movie was okay. Um, I don't think I think if you love the books, you probably should check it out. I think again, I thought it was kind of slow paced. Um, this this movie is like uh, I think like uh, maybe hour and like forty minutes maybe. Um, I thought the, sc the screening was great because they gave out a lot of cool things. Posters, face paint and candy and everything. Really Halloween centric. Um, but um, if you are a, a, a fan of, of, this, of this book and you grew up being creeped out by this, yeah, check it out. But I also think that this movie probably is something to maybe just... Um, it, I, it, it, it depends. It, it, it really depends on your, your fandom for, uh, for this book. Um, again, I thought the movie was okay. 
Um, I didn't think it was bad. I didn't really love it. I just thought it was just okay. But um, again, I really do leave that up for you guys' interpretation to go check it out because I think there was a lot of good things in it as well that you may enjoy. I think the people of the books will enjoy it. And, um, and, and, you know, if you got nothing to do, so you can check it out. But then again, you know, if you're not really big into it, you really may not be into horror. I don't think this is like a must see, but it is like a possibly check it out. So yeah, but anyway, thanks for tuning in for my review and I hope you guys check out my next one and you're subscribed and because they're going to keep coming, you know, we're right in the heat of summer and more and more stuff is coming out. So thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you guys for the next review. Peace out.